Down in the house basement, Lisa gazed at the CNI unit's blueprints carefully, and she began fascinating the side panels of the drag, drag, drag dragster-shaped body on the machine. It had been exactly an hour since Lisa revealed everything about Lincoln's brain hemorrhage to her parents, and she already constructed the flat bottom of the CNI unit, and was in the process of the welding and screwing the panels onto it, and the small tire of wheels on the side. Once the whole bottom had been assembled, Lisa planned to install the large Luneman battery into the unit and construct new power to the unit, which will allow the battery power for the machine once it was fully completed. As Lisa worked on it carefully at the machine, she heard someone approaching from behind her. Catching her almost off guard, Lisa spun around and saw it was Lucy. Oh, Lucy, what brings you here? Lisa asked curiously, not expecting to see Lucy down in the basement. Lucy didn't answer. When Lisa noticed a petrified expression on Lucy's face, she knew something wasn't right. While Lisa couldn't exactly see Lucy's eyes because of the black hair covering them, she could see that Lucy was frowning in a way that told her that something was clearly bothering her. You seem trouble. Is something bothering you? Lisa asked. Very much so, Lucy answered in a rather cold manner. I see, Lisa replied, concerned. Care to elaborate the problem? Lucy clenched her fist and said softly in a sad tone voice, Why did you tell us, Lisa? Why did you tell us about Lincoln? Lisa felt her heart skip a beat as soon as she heard Lucy ask that question. She soon realized that moment that Lucy must have eavesdropping on the whole entire conversation Lisa had with her parents about the hemorrhage in Lincoln's brain, and this made Lisa slightly panic. And had Lucy already told the rest of her sisters and Luann about it as well? I fail to understand what you're asking, Lisa lied. Don't play games with me, Lucy snapped. I was in the vents writing my own poems when I heard you speaking to our parents about something so serious. So I crawled over to the vent leading to the, their room and I heard everything. I'm not stupid. Seeing as how Lisa obviously concerned and she replied with, So do you know about Lincoln's condition, I presume? Yes. And what I want to know is why didn't you tell us the rest of us about it? Lucy replied coldly. That it's because I don't want to cause any more more attention to anybody as it is, Lisa answered. If anyone else were to reveal that I reveal this to the parents, it would cause a great deal for of unsaid stress and depression amongst the rest of the siblings. And as for Luann, she'd most likely end up in a, on suicide if she watched what happened to Lincoln that was going to die at the end of the month. You don't know that for sure, Lisa, Lucy argued. I think it's only fair we let everyone knows, else know about us. Not until my invention is complete, Lisa stated firmly. Lucy just looked over the machine. Lisa was constructing and working on what seemed to be what the invention was. Since she did had struck around long enough in the vents to hear Lisa's explanation, Shin, however, of the CNI unit to her parents, Lucy didn't know about it yet. And what is this? Lucy asked, pointed at the bottom part of the constructed machine. Don't you know? You listen to everything in the vents, so you aren't aware about the, how to save the brother. Lisa asked, confused. Not everything, Lucy confessed. I, I have left the vents after you mentioning the part about Lincoln's brain problem, so I didn't know what else to you said to mom and dad. I see, Lisa replied. Well, to put it simply, it's a machine of capable of injecting millions of microscopic sized Mennonites into a person's brain that are designed to repair the brain damaged tissue and remove the brain tumors and hemorrhages. But it can't be removed almost normal surgical means it would take the rest of the month to complete. But once it's done, I'll be able to save our brother's life. Seriously, that sounds something out of a dark sci-fi story, Lucy said in disbelief. I can assure you that it isn't a joke, Lisa retorted in a serious tone. I wouldn't lie about something like this. Technology like this definitely seems to be something a century is away from now. But with this right scientific mind, everything is possible. How long will it be to complete this machine of yours? Lincoln doesn't have more than a month left to live, Lisa wondered. Hopefully, if it all goes according to plan, I should have it complete by the end of the month. Once the machine is fully constructed, I will be able to successfully save our brother from death, Lisa answered. All I ask is you keep absolutely quiet about Lincoln's condition while the presence of our siblings in order to prevent certain unrest panic from early occurring, and I certainly don't even want you to tell how serious it is and don't let Luan Lu know about it either. Don't you think they have the right to know? And besides, even if I stay quiet, eventually our sisters are going to become suspicious when they see 
you're working on this machine down here, Lucy points out. I'll simply tell them about the part of the science experiment that I'm conducting, Lisa replied. I highly doubt they would fall for it. Given by the fact by the looks of nothing like a science experiment, the bottom part of this machine barely looks complete, Lucy pointed and replied doubtfully. I'm aware of that, Lisa says sarcastically. I'm also aware that our siblings will eventually grow suspicious of what I'm doing down here. And when that time comes, I will let them know about Lincoln's condition. Mom and Dad have also agreed to ensure our sisters that I'm simply working on a special science project down here. For now on, we will need to keep them, them in the dark about this to ensure the tension in this house doesn't get any worse than it already has. Mom and Dad are already freaking about, about the hemorrhage, and it will only get worse if everyone else finds out about it. So please do not say a word to any of this. Lucy was silent for a moment, and then she pondered what to do. She hadn't considered the facts that Lisa had just mentioned due to the overbearing shock of learning that Lincoln's life was online because of a growing brain hemorrhage. Yet she does know that Lisa was right about one thing. If Lisa learned about this, she would end up having a mental breakdown over it, and the other siblings would definitely not take the bad news at well either. Lucy doubted that any of them would attempt suicide like Luann presumably would even if she knew that it would be emotionally and mentally scarred for life, learning that her only brother would die from a forming brain hemorrhage. Lucy had already known Lisa since the day that she had shown her talents at Prodigy, and knowing how intelligent she was, Lucy knows she was prone to making mistakes when times when they were deadly like this. Lisa, are you sure you know what you're doing? I mean, I'm no science buff, but what if something really happened bad happens to Lincoln would use this machine to him? Like, you used it at least the subjects in the past and many of our other experiments, but some of them didn't go very well. What if something this ain't fries Lincoln's brain? Lucy asked worriedly. Mom and Dad asked the same question. I can assure that no harm will come to him, Lisa answered. I ran several si simulations on the laptop to ensure the machine won't cause any fatal damage to the patient's brain when used, and all the tests came out positive. I am sir, fully certain that the machine is safe. I see. Lucy replied simply. But well, that means our brother's life is in your hands? Yes, it is, Lisa nodded. And if this machine is successful, it can mass produce the many shipped in billions of other hospitals across the globe. It could be used on other patients and well as brain surgery. The adventure will not only save our brother's life, but possibly billions of other lives out in the world. It will give the humanity a huge leap against the medical technology advancement. Then I pray for your success, Lisa. Lucy replied. I take that as you'll stay silent about Lincoln's condition for now, Lisa asked. It will be as you wish, Lucy replied with a nod. Glad to see that you have an understanding, Lisa said, turning back on the machine. I best better get back to constructing this device. There's no time to lose. Lucy nodded and then rushed back upstairs and climbed into the vents, putting all her faith in Lisa saving Lincoln's life. Several hours later, around 9 p.m., everyone was heading off to bed, including Luann. She had been sitting in her room all day mumbling to her diamond Mr. Coconuts about how much she feared for her brother's life and various other things regarding to the whole situation, and now she was exhausted. Luann hadn't said much to Luna had not said hasn't said much to Luann since the whole day, until she destated her for being the cause of Luann, Luann Lincoln's accident. And even now that she and Luann got to bed, she still didn't say much nothing much to Luann. Meanwhile in Lily's room, Lisa had made the last finishing touches to the Dream Simulator band, and before exiting the room quietly not to wake up Lily, she was once for sure out in the hall and was carefully and quietly walked down the hall towards Luna and Lisa's room. The hallway was dimly lit and then by the night light plugged into the wall, allowing Lisa to navigate down the hall without bumping into anything. Once Lisa reached Luann and Luna's room, she saw the two sisters snoozing in her bed. Lisa... Uh, approached the bed slowly to Luann and then the dream simulator headband on it, being careful as to not wake up Luna or Luann. And she had programmed the device with a special dream simulator as she felt a certain would ease Luann's stress and guilt over Lincoln's accident. A dream was more beautiful than it seemed to be the horrid image it, nightmares that Lisa was sure that Luann might have been having. Lisa could tell that Luann was probably having a nightmare of something every movement since she did that saddened expression on her sleeping face, and Luann was moaning softly with sorrow and dismay. Don't worry, sister, Lisa whispered as she gently said and slid the metal band on around Luann's head and tapped a few buttons on it. You'll feel better soon. 
A set of lights then both came on the side of the headband, flashing red. After a few seconds of flashing red, the lights turned green, letting Lisa know that it was functioning correctly. Luann opened her eyes and felt a gentle breeze through in the air. She then sat out of the fender in the middle of an enormous grass field, various colored trees, and a long lake of sparkling red water that ran through the fields of the grass, leading to a large clearing about 50 feet ahead of Luann, where she saw something glowing bright above the sky. Luann could see beautiful aurora burrows shining brightly along the starry night. Luann both felt awed and then intrigued by the peace and surprisingly calm. What is this place? Luann wondered as she walked through the source of the bright light and clearing up her head. As Luann got closer, she then felt as if she wasn't alone and strange yet. What beautiful forests and trees. Normally a person would have had a pick the pick the panic after waking up in the middle of a strange forest with no knowledge on how they got there. Yet Luann didn't felt any sort of fear or nor that she panicked. Instead she felt a warm Erm and happy, which made something the wind hadn't felt since Lincoln's accident before the accident on April Fool's Day, and that left Lincoln in the shell of his former self. Luann had always been the full of laughter, joy, and happiness. However, after Lincoln was severely injured by one of his, the botched paint traps, any happiness or positive emotion that Luann once has was gone, was replaced with sorrow, regret, and fear. Each new day was a day that Luann constantly feared over for Lincoln's life. Wondering if this day would be his last, wondering if the day would be for Lincoln to end up succumbing to his injuries and end up dying in the hospital. Luann honestly didn't understand why she was feeling any sort of that joy or happiness right now after everything that has happened, yet she's soon soon to find the answer to this mystery. Once Luann finally made it to the clearing, she was greeted by one of the most beautiful sights that she had ever seen this far. In front of Luann was an enormous shallow lake with a beautiful fountain in the center. And it had a glowing star to say not once and on top. Looked at the fountain closely. The resembled a fountain that had the dreams from the Kirby's game series that her friends frequently played but during the past of the during sleepovers. However, the fountain wasn't all what Luann saw. There, standing next to the beautiful fountain was none other than Lincoln. He was standing near the fountain with his back turned to Luann. Lincoln had looked just before he the accident on April Fool's Day, completely unharmed and healthy, thankfully. No signs of brain damage or even other impairments. Luann felt the tears of both happiness and remorse of well upon of her eyes slowly approach Lincoln, the footsteps making soft splashing sounds. Lincoln turned his face to Luann with a smile, looking better than he had before. Luann had no idea whatever this was a dream or some vision above. But right now, none of it mattered, and just being able to see her brother was completely unharmed, unscavered, and even un and standing again, filled with Luann's pure joy and happiness. Hey, Luann, Lincoln greeted. This place is beautiful, isn't it? Luann responded by rushing up and up and, and tightly embracing Lincoln, then her tears flow. Nothing's more beautiful than seeing you unharmed, Luann sniffed. I, I'm sorry for what I did, Lincoln. I, Luann, Lincoln began embracing Luann. There's no need to apologize. I know that you didn't mean to hurt me, and as for Bun Bun, I'm glad you fixed him up. That really means a lot to me, Luann. Luann felt so much relief, knowing that her brother had forgave her for harming him with his, her pranks, but yet she still felt horrible that Lincoln would be crippled for the rest of his life. But you'll never be the same again. You've been brain damaged and paralyzed from the waist down forever, Luann protested. True, but in this place... I don't have to worry about that, Lincoln replied. Luann glanced around and then just at the area, just to wonder how exactly this place was. This was some alternate dimension dream or maybe a limbo. She had been trying to figure out on what this place was, yet Luann couldn't, and no matter how hard she tried. What is this place exactly? Is this the afterlife or is it a dream? Luann asked. Afterlife? Oh heavens no, Lincoln laughed. I am alive, and so are you, so this is no afterlife. Then what is this? i never seen that place so beautiful like this. I can only assume that the dream was of the fountain looks like the fountain of dreams from those Kirby games. Luann wondered, glancing at the beautiful fountain next over to Lincoln. This is a place where you call me the dream realm. It's a place where some troubled people could find themselves relief and comfort their dreams. It doesn't matter where the injuries that they have received or out in the real world. In this place, you are free and healthy as a normal person, Lincoln explained. The real dream realm? Is this where we go in our dreams? Link Luann asked curiously. As a matter of manner of speaking, yes! Lincoln nodded. 
The dream realm is wherever you desire looks at it. If this is a dream realm, whose dream is it? Luan asked. I believe it's your dream, Lincoln replied. I'm part of it. This place is beautiful, Luan said in awe, glancing at the fountain and then entirely the shiny lake around them. I wonder why the dream realm look takes this form. This dream realm usually takes forms of places that people are familiar with in real life. And I believe that's because of because of this place is a landscape and that you've seen before whenever you played the Kirby games in the past. There are many things in the dream realm that I don't know yet, or yet understand, but I believe that it will change whatever form you desire and focus on the landscape hard enough to be in your mind, Lincoln explained. There's no need for that, Luann said, embracing Lincoln again. I'm so happy we're right here and right here with you. I just wish that this dream would never end. Once it does, you will be disabled again out of here in the real world, and it's all my fault. Luann, Lincoln said, embracing Luann again. I know you didn't mean to do that for what you did, and as for Bun Bun, I did quite upset when the party ball exploded and damaged him. But when I saw that you repaired him, it really warmed my heart, knowing that you had toned with what you did. I can't thank you enough. I, I know, Luann said softly, feeling tears running down her face again. I just wish that I could go back to the way things were, back in the real world. Don't despair, Lu Luann, Lincoln assured her. Lisa will find a way to save me, so have to be faith in her. I may not entirely be the same as I used to back in the real world, but with Lisa's help and part of me being healed and held enough to speak again, and if I'm lucky, I'll be able to recover more of my memories. Yeah, you weren't supposed to recognize all of us in the hospital, like Bobby or the Confederate grades. And as for Ronnie Ann, you acted terrified when she got close to you, Luann recalled. I did? Ronnie Ann is my friend. I mean, yes, she was a bit tough and often pestered me during the living lights out of me many times before. But eventually we got along well after that, Lincoln said, surprised. You don't remember anything from the hospital? Luann asked, frowning. Not much, Lincoln replied. Back in the real world, my physical body sustained a lot of damage, and my brain got hurt the most. Because of that, remembering the thing is kind of hard to do back in the real world. That what you can remember since your accident? Luann asked. Hmm. Well, I do remember the fragments of you and the others in the recovery room after me. After I woke up from my surgery, well, then there is more time than yesterday when I had been feeling cleaned up in the hospital in the shower room by mom and some doctor. I can't remember who he is. Lincoln replied, but I remember my mom having an emotional breakdown over my injuries and then the over the castrates coming to see me, but nothing else after that. I remember for every memory since I was a very young form from the dream world, but even here, I can't remember for if the castrates coming to see me. But of course, I can't even remember every event that took place after my accident with the fridge die, as I mentioned. But most of the events are foggy and hard to remember because of the brain damage I've received. I see, Luann said sadly. I don't know how Lisa could possibly help you. I mean, she's a real genius and all, but even Lisa has even has her limits. Don't be so sure, Luann, Lincoln said with a smile. I'm sure Lisa will figure out to heal my, some of my injuries, and I think you might be surprised at what she has in more in store. Luann was a bit confused by this. What did Lincoln mean by that she has more in store? Luann has more, more to ask Lincoln when the dream world began shimmering on it a bit. Hmm, Lincoln said, glancing around. It seems that you're starting to wake up from your real world. I'm glad I'm able to see you again, Luann, and I hope we meet again soon in our dreams like this. Lincoln suddenly started to shimmer and become transparent. Luann quickly embraced him. Oh, Luann, Lincoln comforted, embracing her. You know, the old saying goes like this. All good time things have to come to an end at some point. Just remember, I will always be with you, no matter what state I am. I may not be the same after in the real world, but I'll still be there to see you, even if my mind isn't wasn't as there as before. No, Lincoln, Luann said, almost sobbing at this point. You have no idea what it's like for me to have in the real world. Every day, I worry about your health as much as you lay in that hospital, wondering about whatever you'll make it for your recovery or end up even worse. It's tearing me apart, Lincoln. I, I don't know how much more of this I can hold back out there. I know it might be how hard it might be for you, but you can't stay here forever since you have to face reality and to overcome whatever difficult paths you lay behind. But that includes may my well-being, Lincoln replied, hugging Luann. If you learn to overcome your paths and shut yourself from the world by the mistake that you made, it will haunt you for the rest of your life. Don't shut, 
the world out of the, because of me, Luann. Learn to overcome the events and to never give up. Hearing Lincoln said that such powerful words lifted a pressure off of Luann's shoulders. Ever since Lo Lincoln's horrible accident at her hands, Luann had become a completely different person before. She had been happy, rambunctious teen who always tried to find ways to make other people laugh at her jokes. Her pranks, puns, and despite of them not being very good at some of them being annoying. However, Lincoln suffered for in his life, changing the accident that because of the prank trap that had gone horribly wrong. Luann's personality had changed, changed, for, changed completely after the events of April Fool's Day. Luann was now a sad, depressed, and anxious person who didn't know what to do with her life at this point. Comedy has always been Luann's talent, but after what happened to Lincoln, she never wanted to have anything to do with comedy again. Even if her parents didn't ban Luann from pulling pranks, cracking jokes, or telling puns in the house, Luann will still never be want to be, be or do everything those things again. Comedy was got Lincoln into a horrible mess, and it would always serve as a tragic reminder to Luann and that her brother would never be the same again because of how out of control that she had been with her pranks. However, Luann knew that Lincoln was right about one thing, and that was the fact that she couldn't let this horrible event control her life. However, Luann would have to move on at some point in her life, no matter how hard it could be. Oh, I'll try, Lincoln, Luann finally said, but I don't know how. You will, Luann, Lincoln responded. In time, you will know I believe in you, Luann. Lincoln Blue group began to grow, fade away slowly, causing Luann to grow distressed. Please don't go, she pleaded. I believe in you, sis. I believe in you, Lu Lincoln repeated, until he faded away with the rest of the dream world. Lisa had noticed Luann began to rapidly stir in her sleep, making her realize that Luann was slowly waking up. Lisa quickly pulled the dream simulator off of Luann's headband, and then rushed out of the room just before she woke up completely. Once Lisa was back in her own room, she glanced at the headband and saw the green light flashing rapidly on the left side, letting her know that her dream simulator had programmed and worked successfully. Smiling in satisfaction, Lisa set the band on the side and climbed onto the bed, exhausted from staying awake in Luann and, and Luna's room for about an hour. Don't worry, Luann. I'll save your brother's life, I promise. Lisa whispered to herself, then fell asleep, dreaming of Lincoln.